Hey, this is a video for all GFX owners, and uh, I suggest you listen to it because it's actually quite important. It actually significantly changes the status of uh, the newest lens, okay? And I don't sell any lenses or anything like that, no affiliate links, so whatever you buy, I don't make a dime. This is about the new 45 to 100 millimeter. Well, I've already done the full review. One thing I didn't check, and of course that fault lays on me, I'm actually updating it in my free Fujifilm book, which I'm working on the third edition. This is really, really important. This also, too, changes the status of this lens. As I make bold statement about a lens, that means it's important, and it means I give it strong consideration. I don't just, like, say stuff off the top of my head, especially when it involves someone else's money. And GFX lenses are not that you know, that they cost a good bit of money. This is the most important um, GFX uh, lens now, the single most useful, I shouldn't say the most important lens, I should have meant to say the uh, single most useful, sorry about that. I'm always thinking about a thousand things at once. And the reason why that's changed, and I've done the full review on this lens, but I didn't actually check it with the MCEX 18G uh, uh, macro extension tube. You think, oh yeah, okay, whatever. I know exactly what you're thinking right now. Who, you know, who gives a damn? Listen, I own all the GFX lenses, all 10 of them, which is what currently exists. Here is a fact. Fujifilm, by the way, has a neat little chart if you want to download it. It actually tells you the minimum focusing distance. And, of course, you get a lot more use out of a macro tube um, with the zoom lens. And this is actually a, a really useful macro tube with the 32 to 64, but it ain't that great. If you don't actually own a macro extension tube, and it's just a hollow tube, it just actually has CPU contacts that pass through, that lets uh, the camera autofocus the lens. In other words, it's a factory hollow tube with just pass through contacts. And by the way, you do not want the MCEX 45, which is 45 millimeters instead of 18 millimeters. It's kind of like a 1.4 teleconverter. You know, one-four teleconverters converters are great, and people think, well, if that's great, then a two-times teleconverter must be better. And it's like, no, things get radically worse. You really never want to go over a 1.4 teleconverter. It's the same reason why you don't want a long-ass extension tube 99% of the time. Here's the thing, and I didn't think to check this because I thought the same thing that you're thinking right now. Well, you know, it's, it's a useful, it's kind of a bit of a gimmick, and on every GFX lens, that's pretty much the conclusion. That's an accurate statement. And the most useful lens until now was with the 32 to 64, which um, had a, a minimum working distance between 32 to 64, between 27 millimeters and 90. This new one is between um, 80 millimeters and 209, but very importantly, let me tell you the issue with this macro extension tube on the 32 to 64, and then I'm going to tell you how incredible it is on this lens, the 45 to 100. Say you're at 32 or you're at 64, it doesn't really matter what the hell. Your uh, working distance is just this narrow window. So what you're doing is that you're bobbing in and out to find the range where the camera can actually freaking focus. And it's even worse on prime lenses, okay? And it's no, not any better on the 120 millimeter macro either. And, of course, it's pretty much damn essen uh, essentially useless on the 100 to 200 millimeters. So, currently, we actually have three zoom lenses. 100 to 200 is useless, as it should be. I mean, that's not really... 32 to 64, it's the best until this. On this, I've been out now for four and a half days shooting indoors and outdoors. I post this stuff on Facebook and Instagram. Playing with this lens, so incredibly happy. Just like a happier than a pig in poop. Happier than a woodpecker in a lumber yard. Just absolutely unbelievable. There's no more bobbing and weaving to find, you know, the sweet spot. You, uh, the most useful range is somewhere between like 70 millimeters and 100. But I mean, it's perfectly useful anywhere through the range. And there's no more bobbing and weaving. You do need to know, like, okay, I'm around about, uh, you know, 60 millimeters on the 45 to 100. So I need to get in a little closer. But you don't actually have to do this number. You have pressed the shutter release button. And it's going to find focus. And it does a really, this macro extension tube with this lens makes this now the most useful uh, Fujifilm lens. Even more so than the 32 to 64. 
Oh yes, it does. Let's say, and this is often the case, someone just got, well, you know, I got the GFX 50R to deal. I can't really afford anything more than two lenses. Until now, it has said the 32 to 64, which is basically the correct conclusion of pretty much everybody. Depending on what you shoot, the best uh, GFX lens, uh, my opinion, since I own all of them and a bit of a expert on testing lenses, and I definitely am, is the 45mm 2.8, small little compact prime lens. They say I want one lens to pretty much do everything. By the way, one of my most uh, despised lenses of the GFX series is the 120mm macro. I love macro lenses, but no to that lens. No. What's wrong with it? Nothing. It's just, it's just, it's blah. Um, this is a perfect portrait. They say, well, it's an F4. It can't be that great. I mean, is it better than the 110mm F2 for portraiture? No, it's not. However, this has extremely good bokeh at f4, and people keep forgetting this is a uh, f4 medium format lens. It essentially has the bokeh of an f3.5 or an f3.2 lens. It's got amazing bokeh. It's a perfect do-it-all portrait lens, short-range telephoto. It's essentially a fx equivalent of a uh, a 38 uh, to uh, a 78 millimeter. Let's just say a 38 to 80 millimeter. Just to make it easier. You can just say 35 to 80 millimeter. It makes it easier to remember. Extremely useful. That was, by the way, for more than a couple decades there, Nikon's uh, most favorite uh, zoom lens for weddings. A, uh, short, uh, a uh, short zoom lens for pretty much everything. Essentially a 24 to 70, which is the most useful wedding lens. I guess slap on this macro extension tube, and I don't do weddings anymore, but, uh, you know, do the lace doilies, the, you know, the, the bride and groom's rings. Oh my god, this is just, it, this is undeniably a more useful lens than even the 32 to 64 is, which is a 24 to 50 millimeter equivalent. 24 to 50, okay. This at a 38 to 70, great for portraiture, great for pretty much everything. If I'm going to walk the streets, and let's not forget too that this is an OIS lens, yeah? This is an OIS lens, the 45 to 100. I would rather have this lens for walking the street. If I wanted one lens, say, and this is usually the case, so I do portraiture, headshots, I love to do macro. And, uh, you know, I just want something to walk around the streets with. Well, there's no single lens that's going to do that. And of course, you have an enormous amount of cropability with a medium format camera. But with this, uh, and this macro extension tube is not that incredibly cheap. I mean, it's 320 bucks. But this combined with the 45 to 100 makes this undeniably the single most useful Swiss Army knife, do it all, uh, jack of all trades, do it all uh, lenses for the GFX line currently. Of the 10 lenses that are out there, and I own all 10 of them. And it easily surpasses. Now, it's completely my fault for not testing. The macro extension tube on the on the this the 45 to 100 uh, prior to this, I thought even knowing this chart, you know, which I knew what the specs were on the minimum between 45 and 100 for this lens, I thought, well, you know, it's more, you know, okay, but you know, it's a little too much of this number. I was like, you got to find that sweet spot. You don't have to do that with this lens. I did not know that until I tested this a couple days ago, and uh, I really tested the hell out of it today. A lot of testing indoors, outdoors, and I have fiber optic uh, uh, ring lights that are attached to speed lights that are perfect for outdoor uh, macro photography where I can actually step uh, down to f16, completely crush the sun, and uh, just have my uh, subject uh, only illuminated as I posted on Instagram. This makes this undeniably with, assuming you get the macro extension tube, of course, which doesn't come with a lens, um, the single most do-it-all lens in the GFX line. It, it, it absolutely is. My review of this, by the way, was a 10 out of 10. It sets up there with only four other GFX lenses, uh, one of them, of course, being the 45 uh, millimeter and uh, the 32 to 64. Well, even the 32 to 64 didn't get a 10 out of 10. I got a 9 out of 10. So far, it's usefulness. It's a 10 out of 10. This is a 10 plus. By the way, this is the only lens I rated a 10 plus out of the 10 uh, GFX uh, lenses for uh, for uh, usefulness. Like you can do so much with it: portraiture, macro, headshots, wedding photography, street photography, travel. I love macro photography so much, and the fact that just 
pair carrying around this weighs nothing, you know, uh, macro extension tube and the 45 to 100. Um, yeah, I think I made my damn point, so. Very, very shocked. I had no idea that this macro extension tube, which I've used with every other GFX lens, would perform so radically different, and that's the reason why I did not test it earlier on the 45 to 100. That's going to be the same thing as it is on every other GFX lens. Well, I assumed, and my assumption was wrong, and that's why I didn't test it until a couple days ago. And I tested the crap out of it today. So frigging happy. Um... I was almost regretting buying the macro extension tube until I found out how effing incredible it is on the 45 to 100. I rest my case. Thank you so very much. Take that into consideration. And I hope you like these videos. If you do, you know, click the link below. Any donations greatly are welcome because I don't sell anything and I don't have any affiliate links. Unlike everybody freaking else, I uh, work off of uh, donations. And... Uh, Phew. Thank you so much. By the way, a friend of mine made this uh, art piece for me, if you're wondering what it was. It's an apple, and it's literally covered in uh, genuine gold leaf. And uh, she's a brilliant artist, and she did this herself. It's perfect. I'm like, she considers me kind of like a teacher, because I teach all sorts of stuff, basically. So I love this golden apple. It's real gold. Well, I mean, it's an extremely thin layer of gold, but it's still it's covered in actual real gold. That's so cool. Everybody loves gold, right? Thank you for that. Bye.